You're tuned into Firepower Ministry presenting The Violent Taketh It by Force. Dr. Stella would love to minister at your next ministry event, teaching and empowering believers to live victoriously. Call 318-792-5972 on the web, www.firepowerministry.org. For more information about Firepower Ministry, stay tuned to the end of the broadcast. Let's join Firepower Ministry, service already in progress. Praise God for His goodness and mercy, for opening the ears and the hearts of people in the name of Jesus. We tear off the veil of the enemy and let the voice of the Holy Spirit go forth, not the voice of the enemy in the name of Jesus. I take authority over the airwaves now and I silence every contrary tongue in the name of Jesus. We are going into the enemy's camp every night at 11 p.m. Central Time to take back what the enemy has stolen from us through our sustained fire prayer line. The number is 712-432-0075. That is 712-432-0075. The PIN number is 835555-POUND. 835555-POUND. For more information, call 318-792-5972. I get a touch from heaven this evening. Hey, Father, we cannot come here and not get a touch from you, Lord. Holy Spirit, touch us. Holy Spirit, touch us, oh God. We need fresh fire today. We need fresh power, oh God. We need fresh anointing, oh God. Oh, we need a touch every day. We need a touch every evening. We need a touch every morning. We need a touch every day from you, oh God. Yesterday's fire was not enough. We need fresh every day. Yesterday's touch is not enough, Baba. We need fresh every day. Yesterday's touch is not enough, Jesus. It's not enough for us, oh God. We need a fresh touch every day. We need a fresh anointing every day. Oh, Holy Spirit, move on us this evening, oh God. Oh, fresh breath from heaven, move on us today, oh God. Fresh breath of heaven, move, move, move on us. Move on us, oh God. Open our minds, open our hearts, oh God. Clean our minds, oh God, from every junk, every clutter, in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing fill this place, oh God. Let your glory fill this place, oh God. Let your touch come upon us, Father. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, if you love Jesus, come on, give a clap for Jesus if you love him. Come on, give a clap, give a clap, give a clap, give a clap, give a clap for Jesus. Come on, give a clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Be seated in the name of Jesus. We give God praise. We started last week about studying about the word of God. Amen. We did our study last week on the word of God. And today, we're going to be talking about the characteristics of the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God is God himself. Amen. So if we understand the characteristics of the word of God, if we understand what God puts in his word, then we understand God. Do we, does that translate? If we understand his word, we understand him. Amen. If we understand his word, we understand his plan and purpose for our lives. Amen. One of the things that happen a lot in the church is that there are a lot of saints that are sitting in church that don't truly read the word of God, don't decipher the word of God, don't listen to the word of God. And because of that, they are basing their Christianity, they are basing their religion, they are basing their lives on a fable. Amen? Sometimes people are basing their lives on something they heard on TV. And they don't even know, they can't decipher the truth. Because they have not really studied the word of God and found out about the characteristics of the word of God. One thing I know is that God does not do anything against his word. God does not say or do anything that goes beyond or against his word. Amen? So if you're doing anything in your life and the word of God says you shouldn't be doing it, then you're disobeying God. Amen? And we got to learn to obey God because it's only in obedience can we be safe. It's only in obedience can we be safe. S-A-F-E. Hallelujah. Can we be safe from the wiles of the devil? It's only in obedience can we truly stay out of trouble. It's only in obedience can we have a life of peace and joy. Amen. Hallelujah. So even in the midst of the storm, if you're in obedience, you know that God has your back. The Bible says in the book of John, John 1, it says in the beginning 
was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Amen? The word is considered Jesus. Because Jesus was with God and Jesus is the word and he is God. They say the same was in the beginning. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Amen? Hallelujah. The word was with God. The word was God. The word was light. And the word is Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse 10 said, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave them the power to become sons of God. What are the characteristics of the word of God? The Bible says the word of God, it is quick, and it quickens. What do you mean by it's quick? The word of God is sharp, and it quickens. Most times when you're ministering or you're talking to people, you need to use the word of God, because the word of God has the ability to quicken. Turn to the book of Hebrews 4 verse 12. Today is Bible study. Amen. Somebody say, I'm going to study the Bible. Hallelujah. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says this. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. Amen. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So the word of God is quick, is sharp, it has a cutting ability. Amen. So sometimes when you're talking to somebody or you're trying to do something, you need to use the word because it is the word of God. You can be talking to somebody and giving them your opinion all day. Your opinion does not have any power. Your opinion does not have any ability. It is the word of God that has the power. It is the word of God that has the ability to cut, to destroy, to convict, to fix, to build. Amen. So if you don't, if you have the word of God in you, as you use that word, you know, sometimes people come up to me, they'll be having one long Christian argument. Well, this is the way I think. I said, please, just tell me where it is in the Bible. If you just show me where it is in the word, then I will follow you and think it. But as long as it is not in the word, you know, what is the basis of our argument? It usually stops the argument right there. I'll be like, are you a Christian? He says, I'm a Christian. And the Bible is supposed to be our basis, right? Say so, yes. So if we're going to have any kind of discussion, then we have to have it based on the Bible. That is the only thing where we can all agree on. That is our standard. Amen? So the word of God is sharp. It can cut. The word of God can divide asunder. The word of God can go into people and got things out of them that our own ability cannot. Amen? In fact, that's why the Bible says that we should renew our mind with the word of God. Because as you, you, you listen to the word of God and listen to the word of God, it has the ability of going into your mind and pushing out other things you used to think about. Pushing out negative mindsets. Pushing out things in there that strongholds that have been built. Because the word has the ability to do that. Amen? Come and say, I'm going to allow the word of God to cut me. Somebody say, say, I'm going to allow the word of God to cut me. Hallelujah. Because we have to allow the word of God to cut us. Amen. We have to allow the word of God to go in and prune us. Hallelujah. Jesus said something in the book of John 15. Turn to the book of John 15. We're in Bible study. Hallelujah. The book of John 15 says, I'm the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh, or taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, that it might bring forth more fruit. Verse 3 says, now you are clean through the word that I have spoken to you. So the word of God has the ability to clean us. The word of God has the ability to deliver us from past habits. 
Amen? So what is the Lord going to use to prune? They say if you're a child of God and you're bearing fruit, they will prune you. Prune you so that you can bear more fruit. Pruning is not usually a good feeling. Amen? Purging is not usually a good feeling. Pruning is the ability for you to go in and start taking things out of you that God did not plant. Pride, anger, unforgiveness, the me mentality, me, myself, and I, amen? Taking self out of you so that you can truly now be a reflection of Jesus. Hallelujah. And what does the, the Lord used to prune us is the word of God. Amen. He said you're clean by the word that has spoken to you. What are the characteristics? It's quick, it quickens, and it has the ability to prune you. It has the ability to clean you out. It has the ability to reshape the way you think. It has the ability to change you from the inside out. That is why when people get saved, they need to get the word in them because it is the word of God that is going to change you from being a thief to being somebody that doesn't steal anymore. It is the word of God that's going to make you stop from being a fornicator to being somebody that lives in righteousness. It's the word of God that's going to make you stop from being somebody that gets angry all the time to having a mild temperament. Amen? Because the word of God is quick, it's sharp, it's a two-edged sword, it has the ability to prune. I teach a message called, Everybody Needs Deliverance. In that message, one of the things we do is that we go in and draw the characteristics, what are the things we need deliverance from? From self, from anger, unforgiveness, lying. We need deliverance from a lot of things, you understand what I'm saying? From sicknesses, infirmities, generational curses. We need deliverance from bad habits. We need deliverance sometimes from selfishness. Amen? And the thing about people like, well, selfishness is just a characteristic. Most of those things are actually evil spirits. Anger, wrath, lying. You understand what I'm saying? All those things are actually things that are not of God. Things that are planted. They are like evil injections. Like little chips put in by the devil. From your past. Before you got saved. Before all the things you used to do. You understand what I'm saying? All those things, they help. They program you to who you are today. But the word of God can go in and dig out the lies. Dig out the unforgiveness. You know, because there are some things that the Bible knows, that the, the devil knows that it's written in the Bible. And if he can get you to do it, then you can be in his camp. You can be a child of God and the devil is still harassing you. For example, unforgiveness. The Bible says if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. If you stand praying, forgive. There are a lot of people whose blessings, whose breakthroughs in life are getting hindered because they are carrying unforgiveness. And if the enemy can keep you carrying unforgiveness, guess what? He has you. If he can keep you carrying unforgiveness, he can keep your blessings. Whenever your blessings are coming, you're praying, Oh God, oh God, release this to me. I need to prosper. I need to do this. I need to do this. But the minute that prosperity is coming towards you, there's a strong man standing there going, Nah, I got to take it. Why? Because he's carrying unforgiveness. And the Bible says he can't, he can't get anything if he's carrying unforgiveness. So that becomes an accusation that stands against you in the spirit. Amen? People are like, well, what do you mean by accusations? The Bible says in Revelation 12, verse 10, that, that the devil, that is the accuser of the brethren, he stands before God day in, day out, accusing us, giving reasons why we should not be blessed, giving reasons why we should not prosper, giving reasons why we should not be healed. The word of God says that God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. If we don't have our stuff, the enemy is keeping it. And why is the enemy is keeping it? Because of all the little ladders of darkness, the little things he has programmed in us. Then he comes back and uses the same things he programmed in us as a legal reason to keep our blessings. Amen? But the word of God is so powerful, the word of God has the ability to go inside you and uproot and prune and take out all those little things that have been a hindrance to your moving forward. Amen? Somebody say, I will let the word of God prune me in the name of Jesus. I will let the word of God prune me in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because when we let the word prune us, it gives us it puts us in a better position with God. It puts us in a better position in life, period. Psalm 119 verse 50 says that this is my comfort in, the, in affliction for the word has quickened me. 
The word of God becomes your comfort in affliction. When bad things are happening to you, when crazy things are coming against you, do you know what I'm saying? When you have those battles that you're fighting and you don't know how, you don't know where to step, you don't know the next, this thing. The word of God can be a comfort in your affliction because it can quicken you. You know, there are many people out there that, you know, they found that, they've done studies and found out that Christians, people that are Bible-believing Christians, church-going Christians, real Christians, that a lot of them are less depressed. Why? Because of the hope that our Christianity gives us. Amen? So when the word of God is in you, even though things might go bad for you, but that word has a way of quickening you and pulling you back up. It has a way of bringing you out of every discomfort, every affliction. When you're going through stuff, that is when you should read the word. You see, sometimes when I'm going through stuff, I lay down in my bed and I play the word of God. I play it and it plays, I just play the Bible. It keeps playing and it keeps playing and it keeps playing and I'm listening to the word. As you're listening to the word, you have the ability of going into your spirit man and cleaning stuff out. Amen? You just find out that you get up and you feel better. Instead of going to sleep with TV on. There are many people that go to sleep, they are watching TV at, at 11 o'clock. It was a nice family program. And then they leave the TV on. By 2 a.m., there's some horror movie going on on TV. And you're watching it. And guess what? The same effect it's having, the same effect that that sound and that horror is having on your soul is the same effect that if you're listening to the Word of God, it will have. Because the Word of God will have a good effect on your spirit man. And the horror movie you're watching will have a bad effect on your spirit man. So you wake up from sleep in the morning with a headache and you're wondering. You wake up tired like you've been fighting. And why do you feel that way? Because you allow the wrong influence as you slept. I always advise people, get the Bible on MP3. You don't even need, you know what? Go online on audio Bibles and click it and you will find an audio Bible online that can play all through the night while you sleep. So you can listen to the word of God and you can quicken your mortal body. Amen? You can quicken your soul. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 154 that plead my cause and deliver me, quicken me according to your word. Amen? So when you're feeling down, when you're feeling oppressed, when you're feeling depressed, get back to the word of God and ask that word to quicken you. In fact, the word of God says, the Bible says, God will quicken us to call upon him. The word will quicken you to pray. So sometimes as you quote scripture, as you just read scripture, and sometimes it's good to read it aloud. Because you see, the Bible says that the word of God that goes forth out of the mouth of God will not return to him void. What does it mean that it will not return to him? When you quote it back to him. It's not just when you're thinking it in your head. It's when you quote it back. When you quote it back to God, it will not return void. God will do what that word says he will do. So you need to quote the word of God so that it can help do some things in your life. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Psalm 103, and this is a very important thing that I see about the Word of God. The Bible says in Psalm 103, verse 20, it says, Bless the Lord, ye angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. What does he say? The angels of the Lord, they are powerful, they are strong, they excel. They do what? They do only the commandments of the Lord. And what do they do? They hearken unto the word of the voice of the word of God. Amen? What is the voice of the word of God? Is the word of God quoted. The voice of it. The angels hear the word when you voice it out. So they will hearken only to the voice of the word of God. So if you're sitting down and you want the angels of God to go on an errand for you, quote scripture. When you want them to do something for you, quote scripture. The word of God says this, the word of God says that it is written, it is written. Quote scripture, because that is what angels are going to hearken. That is what they respond to. Amen? They don't respond to us crying. They don't respond to our opinion. They don't respond to what we think, what we say. They don't respond to what your great-grandfather taught about Christianity. They hearken only to the voice of the word of God. That means they hearken to the, the word of God quoted out. The word of God spoken. They've hearkened to the spoken word of God. That is the voice of the word of God. Amen? The devil is also an angel. I bet a fallen angel, but the devil is also an angel. So basically, he too has to hearken to the voice of the word of God. Amen? So if the enemy is harassing you in some facet of your life, what do you do? Get back to quoting the voice of the word of God because he has to flee. That is why Jesus 
defeated the devil with the word. It is written. Because that is what the Bible says. Angels of God have to go when you quote scripture. The devil has to move too when you quote scripture. Amen? So when things are going wrong, things are happening to you, bring your case by scripture. Amen? Bring your case by what? By scripture. Find the scripture that pertains to your situation. You want money? Find the scripture that pertains to money. And when you find it, fulfill your own part of the scripture. Fulfill the birth. Salvation is free, but the blessing of the Lord always has a birth. You will be the head and not the tail if you hearken to my commandments. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment you, you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord whose righteousness is of God. Amen? There is therefore no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus that walk not after the flesh but walk after the spirit. So find the but. If you don't want condemnation to come unto you, walk after the spirit. Amen? If you don't want any weapon formed against you to prosper, easy. Be a servant of God and let your righteousness be of God. Live a life of righteousness. Amen? Let the righteousness of God convert you. Whatever it is that they say in the Bible, they say, but. So, if you're looking for something from God, find the word of God on it. Fulfill the but. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I will fulfill the but. God, that is, amen. God, that is the part that gives us a little trouble is fulfilling the but. Amen. So I will open the windows of heaven from you for you if you do what? If you tithe and you give offering. So if you're sitting and waiting, oh, I want prosperity. I want the windows to open for me. I want this. I want God to bless me. And you're not a tithing Christian. You're not giving into the work of God. You have not fulfilled the but. Hallelujah. When you fulfill the but, then you can stand and quote scripture. The Bible says this. The word of God is righteous. The word of God is what? It's righteous. Psalm 119 verse 123 says, My eyes fail for thy salvation, for the word of thy righteousness. What do I mean by the word of God is righteous? The word of God is what can help you live a life of righteousness. Because the word of God will go inside you and clean sin out of you. That's why the Bible says it. When Jesus said it in, 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 in John 15 verse 3, that you are clean by the word that has been spoken to you. Amen? So the word of God has the ability to change people. That's why you can see somebody will be saved and not really studying the word, not doing anything, and continue to live crazy. And then you see somebody start coming to Bible study, reading the word and everything, and you just see their life change, their attitude change, their mentality change. And after a few years, they are truly a new creature. Amen? All of us have come from far, far places. All of us have come from places where we used to do all kinds of things, but as we grow, as we get the word and allow the word, allow the righteousness of the word to change us from the inside out. And then we become new creatures. That means all habits have passed away. All ways of thinking have passed away. That means all attitudes have passed away. Amen? And we're truly new creatures. The word of God is pure. Psalm 119 verse 140. Thy word is pure, therefore thy servant love it. The word of God is what is pure. The word of God does not do anything that will bring sin and calamity to you. If somebody starts using the word of God to do wrong, like, you know, there was a man that said, well, uh, came, to one of, came to our father in the Lord and said, well, sir, Dr. Lukoya, uh, how many wives does Solomon have? He said, 700. He said, okay, I want just two more. He said, if Solomon had 700, why can't I have two more? Amen. But, what happened to Solomon's 700 wives? What did he do to Solomon? He made Solomon backslide. Today, Israel till today, some of the problems, all the devil worship that came into Israel was brought in by Solomon and his crazy wives. It was brought in by Solomon. Even some of like, you know, when you go back right now and you follow the history of some of these organizations like the Masons, Illuminati, you follow their history. When you follow their history, it goes back to Solomon. 
Because Solomon was given so much wisdom, and Solomon used that wisdom to access the occult because of all his numerous wives. When you go like the Jewish Kabbalah, which is one of the most occultic organizations in the world, it goes back to Solomon. If you go right now, you follow the history of, of the um, history of the Rastafarian. Guess where the history of the Rastafarian? It goes back to Solomon. Solomon had a child with the Queen of Sheba, and he went down to Hele Selesi, and they thought that was the Lion of Judah. That's why they wear the lion thing because it's a mane. It makes them look like a lion. It's a demonic religion. Why? Because Solomon, did, although he had wisdom, he did not follow the word of God. Amen? So if we go through the Bible and want to take a bad example and follow, it's up to us. We're going to also go through the same calamity that the bad example followed. Amen? Hallelujah. So the word of God is pure. The word of God brings purity. The word of God makes you want to live right. The word of God makes you want to do the right thing. Amen? Because the word of God is what? It's pure. Hallelujah. If you turn to the book of Psalms, Psalms 12 verse 6. Psalms 12 verse 6 says, The word of the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. The word of God, like the Bible says, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. The word of God has been tried through the ages, and it has stood the test of time. Amen? The word of God is pure. Proverbs 30 verse 5, we're in Bible study, so turn your Bible to Proverbs 30 verse 5. Every word of God is pure. He is the shield unto them that put their trust in him. Hallelujah. The word of God is pure and it's a shield to those that put their trust in him. Amen. The word of God is true. In other words, the word doesn't lie. When the word of God says something, it means it. That is God speaking. You can take it to the bank. If the word of God is not coming, I always tell people, if the word of God is not coming true to your life, if the word of God is not standing in your life, then you need to figure out why is it not coming true in your life. Most of the time, the word of God might not be coming true in our lives because of our foundation. Stuff that happened down generation lines. The word of God sometimes is not coming true in our life because we don't carry enough fire. We don't carry enough anointing. We don't walk like the disciples walked. You know what I'm saying? The disciples carried raw power. These days you don't find people that carry raw power again because there are not too many people that want to live in the upper, upper room. So the word of God is not because the word of God is not true. The word of God is coming void because there are no people that God can back their word. Amen? The word of God is true. Psalm 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an, is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Amen? Verse 160 says, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of your righteous judgments endure it forever. God's word is true from what? From the beginning, from the foundation of the earth, and it endure it for what? Forever. Jesus said, Not one word that I've spoken out of my mouth would fall. One of the biggest things the devil does in our lives is to keep us in a position where number one, we're not filled with the word. Number two, we're not filled with fire. Number three, we don't understand warfare. Number four, we don't know how to push back and get our stuff. Number five, we're not violent as Christians. We're one of those easygoing, you know, they call them civilian Christians. In this time and season where the enemy is on our backs, we need some people that are cutthroat warriors. Christianity, the Christian religion is not a religion of, of a, it's not a civilian religion. You cannot enforce a kingdom and push a kingdom without going forcefully. And the word of God can be used to advance the kingdom. Amen? A lot of us are crying, Lord, give me power. I need more power. God is like, I've released all power to you. If you align yourself according to my word, then you can reflect the son of righteousness. 
Just like the moon has the ability to reflect light from the sun. If we position ourselves, then we can reflect sun. We don't have any power or any light of our own. But if we position ourselves in line with the word of God, then we can reflect the sun of righteousness and reflect the power and the glory of God. The word of God endure it forever. Isaiah 40 verse 8. Amen. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand for what? Forever. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 89. Amen. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. In other words, the word of God has been written, it's been settled. It's been decreed, it's been spoken, it is settled. All we have to do is position ourselves for that word to work in our lives. Hallelujah. We have to position ourselves for the word of God to happen, work in our lives. Amen. So like I always say, why is it that the word of God is not working in the lives of the children of God? Number one, a lot of us don't have the time, the energy to sit down and truly have the devotion of the people in the Bible that carry raw power. If you go through the word of God and you see the people that carried power, that carried the raw power of God, there were people that were dedicated to the word of God. Look at Elijah. Elijah fasted 40 days, no food, no water in the wilderness. Elijah went on a three day, three year, three and a half year fasting program just to come and defeat Jezebel. A lot of us want to pull down strongholds in our communities, but tell them to fast for three days. Like we have a deliverance program coming in, three, in two days. And I've told you people, it's going to be a three-day dry fast. You're going to fast for three days. You're not going to eat, not going to drink water. A lot of people are already having palpitation, just thinking about it. They're like, I'm going to fast for three days. No food, no water. Can I survive it? Yes, you can. Children have survived in Rwanda that are like two. The word of God is not coming true in our lives and in the lives of us as Christians. Well, because... Most of us don't have the time, the energy, and we are not putting the dedication that it takes for us to carry the power of God. Amen? If you look at the lives of the apostles, they prayed, they fasted, they studied, they spent quality time in the presence of God, and they carried raw power. In the life of the apostles, a lot of them, they had the right motive. So they carried power. And the Bible says that it is a faithless generation that requires a sign. The generation right now is faithless, it is vile, and they're not going to take Christians seriously until we start demonstrating raw power. Until we start showing them that we can speak it by the word of God and God will back us up. A lot of us just need to die to self a little. A lot of us need to get out of our comfort zone. A lot of us need to just stop, maybe fast a little. Read the word a little. Pray a little. Leave yourself out of it for a little bit and think about the greater purpose of your calling. Life has happened to a lot of us. God is too busy to truly access power. But I know that God is looking for some people that are going to decree his word and desecrate altars. God is looking for some people that are going to decree his word and people and walls will come down. Amen? God is looking for some people that are ready to take the word of God seriously. God is looking for some people that are ready to pay the price it takes. Hallelujah. I'm a deliverance minister. Most of the time, like I say, our ministry, we have people coming from all over the place. Most of the time, when, we come, when they come here and the power of God comes down, strange things happen to people's lives. We've had a guy that came here that for years, he couldn't eat fish or anything because if he ate anything, fish or anything, he got attacked by a demon that would harass him at night. He came here for a three-day program. The first time in his life, he was able to sleep and use the komo. Because he could not use the komo because each time he went there, he saw strange things in the water. He was harassed by a marine spirit. When he came here for deliverance, he ate fish for the first time. And went home and slept till morning. We had a young boy here who was four. 
used to be speaking. Da, 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 da. They, they brought the boy here. After prayer, the boy spoke clearly. The child went from to I want snow cone. Hallelujah. We've seen God do the miraculous and the impossible. Most of the reason that people don't want to know is because most people don't want to change their lifestyle. They don't want like, you know, our, our ministry was straight cut. You understand what I'm saying? We don't, we don't compromise on the word of God. We don't compromise what the Bible says. You know, we're not one of those. This is a, this is a ministry that straight up says what the word says and do what the word says. We've watered down the word. We've watered down what the Bible says. We've watered down our Christianity. And finally, we've been caged. And now that we've been caged, most of us cannot carry true power. But I think it's time for a few people to decide that something has to change. Amen? Amen. Come on, get up on your feet and you say, Lord, I need to demonstrate that your word is true in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, give me the ability. I need to demonstrate that your word is true. Help me, Lord. Come and begin to say that. Say, Lord, I need to be one of those that will demonstrate that your word is true. I need to be one of those that will demonstrate that you're still a healer, that you're a deliverer. I need to be one of those that can demonstrate your power, oh God. Father, help me. Help me, Jesus. I need to be one of those that will demonstrate your power, God. I need to be one of those that you can trust with your power. I need it, Jesus. I need it, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Say, Lord, quicken me so that I can call upon you in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord, quicken me. Quicken me, quicken my mortal body, quicken my body, soul, and spirit, quicken my mind, quicken me so that I can call upon you in the name of Jesus. Father, quicken me, Lord, quicken me, Lord, quicken me, Lord, that I can call upon you. Quicken me, Father, that I can call upon you in the name of Jesus. The word of God says in that day, God was going to pour out the spirit of grace and supplication. Amen. I want you to cry out, say, oh God, arise. Pour out the spirit of grace and supplication upon me. In other words, God should give you the grace to pray. Amen. Grace to read the word of God. Amen. Say, oh God, arise. Pour out the spirit of grace and supplication upon me in the name of Jesus. Pour it out, pour it out, pour it out. The spirit of grace, the spirit of supplication. Pour it on me, O oh God. Pour it on me, O oh God. Oh God, arise. Oh God, arise. Pour out the spirit of grace. Pour out the spirit of supplication. Pour it out on me. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to pray that I say, my spirit man, receive fresh fire, receive fresh anointing, in the name of Jesus. My spirit man, receive fresh fire, receive fresh fire, receive fresh anointing. My spirit man, receive fresh fire, receive fresh anointing. My spirit man, receive fresh fire, receive fire, receive fire, receive fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. My spirit man, my spirit man, receive fire. Receive fire. Receive the anointing. Receive a fresh power. Receive a fresh fire. My spirit man, receive fire right now in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God begin to quicken you right now in the name of Jesus. Receive a fresh fire right now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Let the fresh fire of God come upon you. Quicken you to read the word. Quicken you to call upon the Lord. Quicken your mortal body in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire for. Holy Ghost fire fall right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire fall right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire fall right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire fall right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire fall. Fire in the 
the name of Jesus. Fresh fire in the name of Jesus. Fresh fire in the name of Jesus. Quickening us right now. Charging us afresh. Reviving our soul in the name of Jesus. Reviving our spirit man right now in the name of Jesus. Roko shakara brasata. Let the fire of God, let it charge us right now. Word of God says God was going to baptize us. Jesus, John the Baptist says when Jesus came, he was going to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Oh, Father, baptize us with fire right now in the name of Jesus. Baptize us with a fresh fire, oh God, that will quicken us to study your word. That will quicken us, O oh God, to push through. That will quicken us, O oh God, to call upon you more desperately. That will quicken us, O oh God, to seek your face until we truly start becoming carriers of your power and of your word. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise. We praise you, Lord, because you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're Jehovah. Father, we worship you. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, King of glory. We bless you for a fresh touch today, O oh God. We bless you for a word that will quicken our mind today in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Praise God. It's time for the equipping in of the Jesus saints and name. training warriors for the end times. We are equipping people that will be a terror to the kingdom of darkness. Prophetic voices that will decree over territories and long-standing strongholds will be demolished. The Bible says from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent taken it by force. We are going into the enemy's camp every night at 11 p.m. Central Time to take back what the enemy has stolen from us through our sustained fire prayer line. The number is 712-432-0075. That is 712-432-0075. The PIN number is 835555-POUND. 835555-POUND. For more information, call 318-792-5972. Get my book, When Your Levy Breaks, How to Pump the Junk Out of Your Life. It's a training manual by itself. We have many other books like Prayer Rain, Prayer Passport, and When the Deliverer Needs Deliverance. This is a part of what we call our Believer's Weapons of Mass Destruction. Over 150 books, CDs, DVDs, and teachings to help teach your hands to war and your fingers to fight. To order our teaching CDs, visit our website and go to our resource center or call 318-792-5972. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, you can sow by visiting us at www firepowerministry.org and click on the donation page to sow. Check out our ministry YouTube channel and visit us on Facebook. This is Dr. Stella coming to you from Alexandria, Louisiana. Hallelujah. At 1416 Metro Drive, across from the post office. For additional information, call Firepower Ministries at 318-792-5972. That's 318-792-5972. It's time for war.